So the idea behind this demo is we're going to be showing Windows 10 and, uh, and Office and the overall Windows experience. Part of it is intended to show how Windows 10 is exactly as you know it and, and expect it and, and as people depend on it. Uh, the other side of it is showing some of the, uh, the key benefits of having Snapdragon incorporated into that, into that equation and into the, the Windows 10 uh, ecosystem here. So, we're going to start where all proper Windows demos start, which is in the Start menu, and we'll launch Excel. So we're going to get heavy into the productivity side of things first. So this is full Excel. This is actually running, this is the uh, Win32 version of Excel, so this is actually running through the emulation layer. And so I want you to keep that in mind while we look at how things are performing here in that that emulation layer is actually, uh, it does a really good job here. And insert a pivot table. I wanted to do something a little bit more than just data entry here because I wanted you to see that even when you're doing some pretty heavy duty Excel work, um, there's, there's, no, there's no delay, there's no, no waiting and loading. It all just works. Create a pivot chart here as well. See there, and if this seems boring, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Excel's boring, <laughs> but uh, uh, but PowerPoint's exciting. No, no. The uh, the idea here is that is that this is just behaving exactly as 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 it's supposed to, right? This is this is nothing you haven't seen before. In fact, it's something you're probably very familiar with, and that's the whole point. It said we're doing just Windows, just Office, and you don't have to worry about uh, compatibility or special versions or anything like that. All right, so I have uh, now in my demo here, I've used Excel, PowerPoint, Word. We can bring Outlook into the equation by sending myself an email here. We can share this as an attachment. So um, that, that, that kind of concludes the uh, productivity side of things. So we, in record time, we've seen the whole, pretty much the whole office suite. There. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, again, the key takeaway there is that there's nothing, there's nothing special, there's nothing optimized or pared down or anything like that about, about Windows 10 or Office on, on this platform. Um, so the other thing that's, that's uh, really uh, kind of critical to the Windows experience is the ecosystem. And what I mean by that is that it's not just Microsoft and Microsoft applications. There's this whole world of applications that are written to run on Windows that we feel it's, it's not even worth making a, a, a device that runs Windows unless you can access all of that. You know, there's no, you know, if, you can't, if you can't download third-party apps from, from whatever source and, and just run them, then that's not really the Windows experience that people already know. So, so we don't want to go down that road. Did you tell yeah. the uh, Microsoft team who work on Windows 10s that? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, not not the 10s guys. Yeah. But, but you know what? <laughs> SRT. I don't know. No, no. So, so, but this is not this is not uh, this is not Windows 10s. We're talking about in in this in this. Uh, uh, effort here with, with Microsoft and, and Qualcomm. This is Windows 10. This is not not uh, not anything with any limitations, like only being able to download from the Microsoft Store or Universal Apps or anything like that. So um, I'm going to download a legacy 32-bit uh, application. This is just seven zip because it's a, a small thing that we can download and install real quick. I just want to show you that this is not the Microsoft Store. This is not a a, uh, a Windows on ARM application. This is Win32, and I can download and install it, and I have it. You know, it's all there. It all works. So, uh, then, uh, if we kind of shift shift from the ecosystem side of things and talk about uh, the connectivity side of things, and we are we are using a gigabit LTE connection. We're we're connected to our test equipment in the back. Our actual internet connection is a, is 100 megabit per second. That's just what we've gotten through through the hotel here. But um, 
uh, if we if we uh, talk about this as as a gigabit LTE experience, uh, say I want to stream video, uh, whatever content source I want to go to. In this way, we can do YouTube because we have uh, we have our own movie that we've uploaded there that we can that we can start watching. Let's say I'm yeah I, I can if I want to watch a movie I can stream content. This is this is 1080p. Saw it loaded quickly, started playing right away. We can go full screen and take full advantage of it. Basically, when you have Gigabit LTE, you're not gonna be worried about the bandwidth that you have. If you, if you wanna stream content, I mean, 1080p takes nowhere near a Gigabit LTE connection to, to stream very high quality. And, um, and so that's what we're showing in this case. But then let's say I'm about to get onto an airplane or something, so instead of streaming the content, I actually wanna just download it to my device so that I have it on the plane. Uh, I can do that. In this case, it's a thirty-minute, a thirty-minute movie that we made. So you think of this like as an episode of a show or something. But at 1080p, this is 1.9 gigabytes. So big file. I mean, there are bigger files out there, but um, but in this case, I'm just going to download it to my device. So I drag and drop. You mind? This is megabytes per second here. So we can go in here and see our actual megabits. And we're doing in the high 300s. Now, when we talk about gigabit LTE, we like to talk about the 970 whatever megabits per second that is the theoretical maximum. But everybody knows that that's not what any one person is actually going to see in real life. Whereas this number, this mid to high 300s, is actually something someone might see for 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 a download that they're doing. You know, um, that's just still a high data rate. The sustained speeds that people are more likely to see are in that like 150 to 200 space. But for a download, a quick download, this is actually a realistic situation. And you can see it takes you know, about 30 seconds, maybe a little bit, a little bit more than 30 seconds to download the whole thing. Your signal strength is on purpose slightly lower than max since you're wired right now? I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, it's so, yeah. awesome performance anyway, yeah, yeah. right? Well, s signal strength in terms of... Looks like cellular signal strength. Oh, right there. yeah. No, I've been... It, it's just full bars here. I don't. I don't know why we're not getting full bars, but clearly, you know, we're, when, when we are over a wire, that's not too. That's not too big of a concern. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. yeah. Um, one other question I had, real quick, about yeah. the YouTube video. If mm -hmm. that was a 4K video, could you? Would, you think, would that work? Yes. So the limitation with the with the 4K video. Actually, I think we have a. Let's, let's, let's see what happens. I don't know what the uh, which servers were on. Uh, I the rules are for my legal department. I'm only allowed to show Qualcomm content. Still be fine. But there is, I believe, we have some 4K. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I do. Uh, there was a, we did a couple years ago a, a 4K uh, video contest. Uh, let's do 4K contest and see if we can find that. Oh, and that's okay. Cool. Let's see what happens. I love that. I've never, I've never done this before. I love, that, that's, I love that you're willing to try it. <laughs> yeah, let's see. So let's turn this up to uh, okay. Let's see what happens. And make it big. Let's see if we can buffer. Yeah, we're still going through browser optimization stuff too, but I don't think that should be an issue in this case. It's thinking hard. There you go. Hit uh, full screen for a second. Yeah, let's go. I mean, it would take that long on a regular connection anyway. You know? Yeah, that looks good. And this is a 4K TV? It's a 1080p TV. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. But we're you know, downloading and processing 4K, right? Yeah. Sure. Awesome, thanks. Yeah. All right. All right, so we download we download the file. Um, you know, as you see, uh, I show that because it, that drives home a, a key value proposition for Gigabit LTE for 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 this platform. And is that we think it um, it uh, accomplishes several cliches of like paradigm shift and game changer and things like that. The uh, uh, but but really, what we think of as for Gigabit LTE for these devices is that when you're having this access to really really high data rates and you can pull down data from the cloud whenever you need it, local storage is no longer the limitation that it has been. And 
all the 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 uh, resources that I have on this device, although it's nice to have them on this device, that becomes less critical as well because the cloud and cloud storage and everything that's out there is is at is at my fingertips, and whether it's here or there matters so much less when it takes you know thirty seconds to download two gigabytes of data. You know, so so that's where we think that that uh, always connected PC the uh, is is uh, is actually something different than just. Uh, a laptop with a cellular connection or something like that. This is actually something new where, where you actually have access to to uh, a huge amount of resources. Like on, going back to the performance side, yeah. right, can you, uh, do you have uh, a copy of uh, Access right now? Uh, access, I do not have one this time. Okay. Yeah. No, nobody uses that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what would I've, I've been, I don't know if anyone in, on our side has tested with access um, at this point, but um, you know, we're, we're sorry we know what it would run. I don't know what it's been on like uh, data sites and data sets so you're and stuff like that. Like yeah. Control. So so keep in mind. Um, I mean, it's all fair questions, and we give we give all the answers we can. Uh, but keep in mind that the type of device that we're going for here is that thin, light, fanless sort of sort of device. So we're not trying to be everything to everyone. This is not the gaming PC. This is not the Photoshop machine that you would have in the office as a professional photographer. This is, and we could run Photoshop if you need to do some, if you need to do something quick and dirty, you know, run, run some photo editing while you're on the road and then, then upload something, you can do that. It's not gonna be the device you wanna do all of your Photoshop stuff in or, or anything like that. So we are, from our research, we've seen it: productivity, web browsing, video streaming. When you do those three things, that's like you know, high percentages of, of what everyone does with these devices all the time. And then being able to do other stuff as needed is absolutely how people use their devices as well. But the bulk of it's going to be around that. And that's what we're focusing on. Again, yeah, not limited to that, but focused on that. So while we've got this uh, task manager open, I want to talk about a, a, a third advantage. So we talked about the PCB size, we talked about Gigabit LTE, and then when we talk about uh, CPU architecture, we're coming from the mobile side, from the ARM side, from the uh, big little side of things. And that's something that's new to Windows. Windows has never, has never been done on the uh, big little architecture before. And, uh, and that's where we have significant efficiency gains because you can see like we've, we've stopped doing some major activities, so we're starting to park cores here. And we can start scaling down uh, the activity on, on, on the CPUs and then going into lower power states. And, uh, and this ties into what we've talked about with that uh, connected standby, where we can go into very low activity states, consuming extremely low power, but still having uh, the instant on capability, the always listening voice command capability, the uh, the uh, background data syncing side of things, all of that can still be in there, operating at a much lower power than what you would see for the sleep mode on traditional on traditional CPU architectures, which are doing nothing while they're in sleep mode, except that they are still consuming more power than we've, we've got all these things going on. So it's really that's bringing something that we've perfected or or, or uh, gotten very good at, if not perfected, on the uh, on the uh, phone side of things. You know, they since they instantly wake up, they can be always listening. They can sync your data in the background while it's asleep without just dry, draining your battery. And that's something that we're bringing to the PC side of things with this. Uh, let's see. I think as far as stuff to go through as part of my kind of dem demo script that that's pretty much everything so um do you guys have any, any questions about anything you've seen or do you want to yeah um can you actually bring up the the you know the system yeah, yeah, yeah. so we can see what it looks like yeah, let me pull up, uh, and the control panels yeah i can do this pc and the whole property that's great yeah and look at that. One thing that you're looking at here, I mean, you obviously see a 64 bit operating system on our base processor, four gigabytes of RAM. That's all That's all good information. Also, the Snapdragon 835 as well. This one, the 1.9 gigahertz, that's, that's something that needs to be uh, kind of fixed on the Windows side, which is that we are running, this, this is, this is uh, tied to uh, CPU zero. 
uh, okay. which for us is a little core. Right. Right. So big little being new to Windows, they just need to update the task manager and, and which core they're referencing off of. If they reference off this core, they'd see a higher number. We haven't announced what what that number is for for the um, you know for the, uh, the the peak speed of, of our big cores, um, but. Can we see maybe some tab, like heavy tab usage on Edge? Um, maybe load each of our websites um, at the same time because we all have a lot of, you know, for better, for worse, ads and flash and crap. All right, so, tell me, um, tell me what so let's go to mobilegeeks.com, mobilegeeks.com in one world. And that would be my site, maybe then yours and yours and yours. I think four tabs of pretty heavy content would be great. Techradar.com. <laughs> we have lost focus. Yes. There we go. I mean, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure it'll be just fine. I'm just kind of want to see you know, when we context switch between them. What else do you want to bring in? You're going to get a ping from Taiwan. That's why you just want traffic. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. Yeah. You can blame me for everything, yes. guys. Um, just a heads up, um, I've got Hugo Smork here, who is our right. head of VR um, at VD. I think it's worthwhile him just give you a rundown of what 15 minutes of what everything we've been doing. That'd be great. For a while. So he's gonna join this room. If you guys don't mind sticking around for another 15. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's yours? Put on yeah. uh, boardwork.com. Two O. So B O O R E D. Oh, board. Or at work. Yeah, board at work. Board at work.com. Yeah, there you go. That's you. Yeah, I don't think we have so much flash running, but. Uh, All right, let's switch between tabs and see, like, are they downloading? Are they running properly? Is there any latency scrolling? I mean, we're not really taxing things too much yet. We haven't loaded the Verge, so we're okay. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Verge goes crazy. Oh, I mean, why don't you open another tab and put the verge up there? Just see, you know, because oh, it's a pretty heavy duty one. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's the verge.com. Yeah, I've seen it before. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you have. And uh, here, another tab, and we'll have a good idea. How about you go and load uh, chipchick.com, which is another site I write for. C H. You got it. Alright. And now we'll see, because that one's pretty bad. <laughs> I keep telling them they need to optimize it. But look at that, it's keeping up. I'll be honest, it's doing better than my 12-inch MacBook right now. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Uh, as long as you said it, we have no legal issues. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Now look at that, yeah. That's pretty good. For four gigs of RAM? Wow. Awesome.